Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's recap, we will be looking at an anime titled Cerberus. In this anime, the kingdoms of Amoria, Ishilfen, and Van Rodis rule over the Kunian continent, balancing power with caution. The slightest disturbance could spark a full-fledged conflict. Their common fear, however, is the terrible dragon Dagan Zot, whose primary aim is to exterminate all living beings. A decade ago, a coven of mages banded together to expel the evil beast. Unfortunately, their attempt, known as the Balbagoa Tragedy, ended in disaster, killing many people. Hiro, who lost his parents in the disaster, was only saved by the swordsman Giru's intervention. Hiro refined his swordsmanship talents under Giru's tutelage with the sole purpose of avenging his family. Now growing master, he sets out on a journey to find Dagan Zot and exact vengeance or perish in the same manner as his parents, consumed by the dragon's wrath. I'm sure that at this point you will want to know how everything plays out, right? Then, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. The opening scene begins with Kismatite, a mage used to lure an evil dragon to an altar. She is surrounded by a bunch of other mages ready to capture and seal Dagon Zot, the evil dragon when he shows up. At some point, a full moon reveals itself in the clouds, and Kismatiti looks at it knowing that Dagan Zot is near. A shadow is observed traveling through the ground, reaching the altar where Kismatiti is placed. Dagan Zot reveals himself from the ground, ready to have Kismati as a snack. Just before he can do anything, Kismiti releases herself from the chains and uses it to restrain the dragon. Her husband, Lord Byro, takes up an enchanted staff, ready to begin the sealing ritual. Supported by the mages around him, he intensifies a barrier around the Dagan Zot, ready to lock him away forever. Along the line, he falls weak on the ground, and the barrier around Zot breaks into pieces. Hero, Lord Barrow's son stands some meters away from Zot, holding a mirror. Since he is the closest to the dragon, he gets targeted, but his father plants a marking on him, and Zot that prevents him from being consumed. Because Dangan Zot missed a chance to eat Hero, he summons soul-burning flames and pours them on everything in his path. Ten years later, Hiro heads to a town named Linsakise one evening. His appearance makes the guards at the entrance of the city allow him in without asking questions. Minutes after he enters the city, a lady named Shari Sharu arrives and announces the arrival of a noble personality, Nambuko. Nambuko arrives at the city adorned with jewelry, accompanied by beautiful women. He throws money out to the public, and this makes the people happy and hail him. Hiro tries to pick up the money, but a kid named Peshat gets it before he can reach it. When Peshat picks up the money, one of his mates slaps the money off his hand because he does not like the idea of taking Nambuko's money. After that, Peshat leaves his group and sneaks into Nambuko's chariot to steal some valuables while Hiro watches him from a distance. Moving on, a man displays a dragon crest that Hiro seems interested in. In seconds, a kid named Tomita runs and takes the crest off the man's hands. As a result, a huge guy blocks Tomita, ready to take the crest from her. Along the line, Hiro offers the man a coin for the crest, and he agrees and lets Tomita go. After Tomita is free of the man, she takes Hiro's crest and runs off to meet her team. Later that evening, Tomita lies down chilling with his mates. She hates the fact that Hiro interfered with his plans because he would have been opportune to steal more valuable items. Unfortunately, Hiro appears at his lair and takes the crest from him. This shocks Tomita because he never expected Hiro to find her. When Hiro leaves Tomita's hideout, Tomita and her crew chase after him. Meanwhile, a swordsman named Giru holds a picture of Hiro looking for him in the city. In the city's palace, Nambuko sits at the same table as the city's leader and eats dinner. He possesses the Grand Troa, which is a wish-granting device that Lord Byro used in the past against Danganza. He proposes to use the Grand Troa to satisfy the leader's wishes, and the offer looks pleasing to the leader. Peshate, who hides between corners, tries to steal the Grand Troa, but he gets caught in the process. In the meantime, Hiro plays a little game of tag with Tomit and her crew. He runs quickly away from them and uses his acrobatic skills to maneuver through the tight corners. At some point, one of the boys falls off a rooftop and Hiro prevents him from falling to the ground. Tomita gets relieved when he sees that his mate is safe but gets pissed after he gets info about Peshate's arrest. After that, he sprints off with his crew members to find Peshate abandoning his game with Hiro. The following day, Peshate is displayed at an arena where he awaits execution. Tomiti is present at the scene, as well as his crew and multiple soldiers. He is pissed over the fact that he cannot do anything to save Peshate cause it will mean death even if he tried. Surprisingly, Hiro arrives stating that he will interfere with the execution leaving Tomita shocked. While Sharisharu announces Peshate's fate, Hiro heads out of the ground and interrupts her. He has reason to believe the Peshate's death penalty is too far. After he introduces himself, 
Sherisharu sends the soldiers after him, but for some reason, he looks confident that he can take them on at once. Their battle begins as the first soldier launches an initial attack on Hiro. Hiro maneuvers through their blades, but refuses to take out his sword from its scabbard. Sherisharu then aims a magical blast at Hiro because she considers him a threat. Hiro blocks the attack and then intensifies his attacks against the soldiers. It goes on to a point where he takes out his blade from its scabbard, but to his surprise, the sword deals no damage to the soldiers because of how small it is. Sharisaru laughs at him because of what she sees, and then orders the soldiers to finish Hiro off. Seconds later, Guru tears through the soldiers at the scene and meets up with Hiro. After Guru teams up with Hiro, Sharisharu takes out the Grand Troa and summons a deadly attack on Hiro that will kill him. Unfortunately, the blast gets deflected leaving Sharisharu and Nambuko shocked. Seconds later, Danganzot comes out of the ground bearing the same markings as Hiro. His presence leaves Nambuko shocked because he does not believe that the dragon is alive. Kunan is a continent that comprises three powerful countries named Saint Amoria, Ishilfin, and Von Lotus, respectively. All countries are equally powerful, and trouble in one of them would result in a continent-wide war. Sometime in the past, there was an evil dragon named Dagen Zot that the entire continent feared. He often proceeds from the shadows to scorch the earth and devour the souls of mankind. In the present, Hiro attacks Dangan Zot, but fails as his enemy slams him to the ground. Hiro runs after him to see if he is okay, but he meets him unconscious. Meanwhile, Nambuko smiles at the might of the dragon, because he smells an opportunity. The soldiers present at the scene fire countless arrows at the dragon, but all of them get deflected. When some arrows head for Hiro, the dragon blocks them preventing them from harming Hiro, and this leaves Sharisharu shocked. After that, Dagan Zot destroys a few buildings and heads back into the ground, becoming a shadow. When Dananzot leaves, the leader of the city questions Nambuko on why he summoned the dragon. Nambuko on the other hand, sees it as a medium to instill fear amongst the civilians, so they will kneel before the leader for protection. Later that day, Hiro lies unconscious in Tomita's lair. While Giru tells the tale of Hiro's past, he states that Hiro's mother and father tried to seal the evil dragon away about 10 years ago. At that time, Kismatiti was used as bait to lure the dragon while some important weapons that would be used to seal the dragon away were in position. Even with the power of 100 mages, Byro's plan failed, and as such, everyone got engulfed in the soul-devouring flames of Dagan Zot. In the present, Tomita and his crew realize that Hiro's parents died as a result of Zot's flames. Soon, Hiro regains consciousness, but yells the name Dagan Zot when he gets up. Although, he looks confused when he gets up, but relaxes when he finds out that he is at Tomita's lair. He wishes to find the dragon and kill him because of what he did to his parents, but Jiru prevents him because he is in no condition to fight. Years in the past, Jiru trained Hiro in swordsmanship when he was a kid. At that time, Hiro was serious about his training because he lost his parents. His motivation stems from the fact that he wants to avenge his parents by killing Danganzot. In the present, Hiro introduces Guru as his master skilled in swordsmanship. Peishate then speaks of the Grand Troa, and Hiro states that it belonged to his father. He feels that if he gets the artifact back, he will be able to defeat the dragon. On the other hand, Tomita speaks about Nambuko, a nasty arms merchant trying to make people and countries fight themselves so he can get rich from selling weapons. After Tomiti is done with his lecture on Nambuko, Hiro suggests finding Nambuko so they can get the Grand Troa and defeat the dragon. As a result, Hiro, Hiru, and Palupa head out to the streets to fulfill their objectives. Palupa is a former servant of the late Lord Byro and is now joining Giru and Hiro on their adventures. He keeps track of their finances and always scolds Hiro when he spends too much. Later that day, Sherisharu receives info that Nambuko has left the city for the land where wishes die. She looks pissed that he left her behind, but she uses magic to see his face through water. The fact that she can see him makes her happy, and it appears that she is quite fond of Sharisharu. Before the mirror image fades away, Nambuko tells Sharisharu to find Hiro the boy whom Dagan Zot protected earlier. In the meantime, Hiro and the others walk through the streets of the city to find an affordable place to eat. After some time of searching, a girl named Eren proposes to help. Next, Hiro, Giru, and Palupa are displayed eating at a restaurant. While they all eat, Eren confirms that Hiro was the one who caused the fuss at the execution arena. She asks about Dagan Zot and questions Hiro if what happened has anything to do with the fact that he is Lord Byro's son, but Jiru and Hiro look shocked. Hiro gets curious and wonders how Eren knows his father, but she declines to answer and then leaves the restaurant. When it is time to leave the restaurant, Palupa gets pissed because Eren did not pay for her food. He proposes that Hiro will sleep outside 
because they have spent money to feed Aaron. This makes Hiro come up with an idea to solve their housing issues. Later that day, Hiro and the others arrive at Tomita's lair, requesting to stay there for some time. Because Hiro saved Peshite's life in the past, Tomita agrees to let Hiro and his crew stay at the lair for the night. The following day, everyone wakes up to meet a tasty breakfast made by Jiru. After a while everyone eats their fill, and Hiro reveals his intentions to get the Grand Troa. Jiru does not consider Hiro fit for combat yet, and as such he proposes that they train. Also, Hiro proposes that Jiru will cook every day to entice Tomite to let them stay there for a while. Later that afternoon, Jiru takes Hiro to a specific place to train. Hiro's first test is to fight some slimes, but he experiences difficulties beating them. He complains about the size of his sword, but Jiru emphasizes that it is best to do the job. Minutes later, Jiru leaves to go hunt while Hio trains with the slimes. At some point, a sand dragon arrives at the scene, leaving Palupa shocked. Hiro considers the dragon hostile, and then charges at it to attack. Along the line, he fails but the dragon does nothing. Rather, the dragon opens his mouth only for Hiro to see a pretty girl named Sarato inside. After Sarato comes out of the dragon, she bids him farewell, and proceeds to meet Hiro. When she meets him, she hugs him, and begs him to come with her. This alone leaves Hiro shocked, because he does not understand what is going on. Palupa thinks Sarato is bad news because she came out of a sand dragon, and has a magic wand. Meanwhile, Hiro is carried away by her beauty, and as such, he ignores Palupa's words. Sarato is interested in Hiro, and as a result, she asks for his name after introducing herself. When she learns of Hiro's name, she takes a look at his eyes, and tells him that they are like a dragon. At this point, Jiru heads back from hunting and freaks out when he sees Hiro speaking to Sarato. Hiro tries to explain himself, but Palupa makes matters worse by saying that Sarato came out from a dragon's mouth. This makes Jiru take up his sword, but Hiro calms him down. In the end, Palupa suggests ignoring Sarato, and they all sneak out of that location leaving Sarato behind. Later on, Tomita teases Hiro, because he assumes Hiro is thinking about girl Serato. It goes on to a point where Hiro restates that he wants to kill the dragon, to prove that his head is still in the game. Meanwhile, he thinks about Sarato because she seemed sad and alone when he left her a while ago. Tomita then suggests that Hiro should leave Sarato alone, adding that she will make friends later on. He uses his crew to illustrate his idea to Hiro, because they are not related by blood, rather they survived over the years. Elsewhere, Sharasharu displays a picture of Hiro to some civilians to find out where Hiro is. After questioning a bunch of peasants, she gets frustrated and resorts to magic. She tries to use a magic mirror to find Hiro, but fails to locate him. Seconds later, Sarato passes by her heading to find Hiro, while Eren watches from a distance. Later that evening, Nambuko spreads a rumor about the return of Dagon Zoth to spite fear amongst the countries in the continent. He sends word to another of his servants to increase the amount of magic stones in production, while watching the price of weapons and armor. Finally, he speaks to Dr. Bafalopa, a magical scientist who works for him. He tells the doctor that war is coming, and he should capitalize on making more weapons which will lead to massive profits on his side. After the doctor is done speaking to Nambuko, he reverts to what he was doing, and then wonders if Sarato is well. Back in the city, Sarato meets up with Hiro at Tomita's lair, leaving Palupa shocked. Tomita wonders how she found Hiro, but it appears that she is attracted to Hiro. Because she is now with Hiro, Tomita makes a joke about Hiro postponing defeating Danganzot. This alone makes Hiro feel uncomfortable, and as such, she leaves the room with Serato. The following day, Giru turns in a beast he killed the previous day, only to find out that it does not cost much. Because of that, he decides to go hunting. Before he leaves, he finds out that Hiro went out to train alongside Serato. In the meantime, Hiro experiences difficulties fighting off some slimes, and he becomes frustrated. At this point, he only trains because Giru says he has to, and as such he sees training as a chore. He intends to defeat Danganzot and get it over with. Seconds later, Sarato sees something that calls Hiro's attention. When Hiro looks back, he sees a wild beast that intends to attack him and Sarato. Because he wants to protect Sarato from harm, he dares the beast to come at him so he will kill it. Along the line, he gets tossed to the ground, and when he wakes up, the beasts fall dead to the ground. Sarato on the other hand, stands still giving off a weird facial expression. It's like her eyes changed from their normal states and reverted when Hiro came close to her. Out of concern, Hiro asks her if she is okay, and she confirms that she is. An injury exists on Hiro's shoulder, and Serato uses her magical powers to heal it when she sees it. Hiro then appreciates Serato for healing him, and then he heads to town to trade the dead monster. The amount of money he gets for the monster is small, and as such, he leaves the vendor pissed. While Hiro walks on the streets of the city with Serato, he notices some guards forcefully taking a civil in to work in the magic stone mines. Because of the way the soldiers rough handle the civilians, Hiro interferes, but he gets beaten to the ground. The soldiers carry him away with some civilians leaving Serato by herself. 
At this point, Tomite arrives at the scene and wonders what happened, while Eren watches them from a distance. Later at sunset, Hiro wakes up and finds himself in prison. The fact that he is there pisses him off because the guards took his sword and the money he made. Meanwhile, Sherisharu gets info that Hiro is held at the Lord's Palace. The Lord in question is the leader of the city that Nambuko hosted earlier. Moving on, Tomite and Sarato head to rescue Hiro while Hiro tries his best to bore a hole through a wall of the prison. Minutes later, the leader of the city notices something off about his mini vault, and as such, he opens it to check the contents. To his surprise, he finds out that his finance journal is missing. He freaks out, and then turns his back to see Serato and Tomita by his workspace. The missing book contains illegal information about his expenses, and he does not want the information in it to leak to the public. Tomita possesses this book, and he uses it to request Hiro's release. At first, his lordship refuses the offer, but then agrees when Jiru joins the party. Moments later, Hiro is let out of prison, and he is excited about the fact that Sarato came for him. The way he looks at Sarato makes Tomite comment that he is in love. Later that evening, Sharisaru arrives at the palace, only to find out that Hiro has been released. This infuriates her, because she has been looking for Hiro for a while now. On the other hand, Hiro teases Tomita and invites him to come have dinner with the others. This time, it's a full house, and everyone is excited that they get to eat. For some reason, Eren still watches them from the shadows in some corner. The following day, Sharusharu takes a dip at a hot spring, located in the city. When she gets in it, she smiles because of the satisfaction she derives from the warm water. Later that morning, Hiro freaks out when he sees the type of food Jiru makes. Palupa encourages Hiro to enjoy his food, because they have a limited budget. Meanwhile, Tomite and his crew eat the food swiftly, because they like it regardless. During breakfast, Hiru reminds Hirpo of their training session after his meal. He specifies that he should not take Sara'ato, but Hiro does not agree with this. When it's time for training, Hiro heads off with Giru, and Sara'ato follows him. On the way, Hiro tells Sara'ato that she cannot follow him, and then he offers her a coin to get what she wants. After Hiro leaves, Sara'ato wanders the streets of the city, till Eren calls her attention. Eren offers to take Sara'ato somewhere nice, and she accepts smiling in the process. Next, Hiro arrives at at a spot with Jiru to begin their training. Seconds in combat, Hiro tells Jiru to go hunt and that he is fine training on his own. For some reason, Jiru declines Hiro's proposal and he stays back to watch Hiro train. Because of this, Hiro is left upset. In the meantime, Serato arrives at the hot spring with Eren. The hot spring is called Healing Springs, and a bath there is rumored to heal most wounds. Conversely, Eren proposes that Serato take a dip in the spring. Because it is Serato's first time in a hot spring, she forgets to take off her clothes, but Eren reminds her. Seconds later, Eren notices that Sharisharu is in the water, and as such, she looks pissed. Elsewhere, Palupa holds a poster that states that a monster has appeared at the Healing Springs. According to the poster, 300 gold coins will be awarded to the person who captures it, and because of that, Palupa wants Hiru to capture the beast. Later that afternoon, Hiro argues with Hiru because he shares a different idea of his training routine. At some point, Hiru tells Hiro that he cannot defeat Danganzot with his current skill level. Because of this, Hiro becomes pissed. Back at the hot spring, Eren begins a conversation with Serato, and after some time, Sharisharu moves closer to their position. At some point, Serato tries to say Hiro's name, but Eren covers her mouth. This is because she does not want Sharisharu to know that Sara'ato knows Hiro. Elsewhere, Hiro attacks Hiro to prove a point, but fails initially. The second time he tries, Hiro notices that Hiro is not holding back, and as such, he counters Hiro, brutally, in a way that sets him in a critical condition. At this point, Paluipa arrives at the scene with Tamita, and they both wonder why Jiru attacked Hiro like that. Because of Hiro's condition, Giru suggests taking him to the healing sporing so he can recover quickly. Moments later, Giru takes Hiro and heads to the healing spring. While on the way, enemy soldiers spy on him, and it appears that they set a trap for Jiru and his people. When Jiru gets to the hot spring, he dis Hiro inside, and after some time, his wounds heal up. Jiru's presence attracts Sharisharu's attention, and she turns away to look at him. On the other hand, Eren questions her about the type of guy she likes. Sharisharu then replies by stating that she is in love with Nambuko. She then reveals that she is there to help Nambuko look for someone, but she can't find the person. The person she is looking for is Hiro, and when she mentions his name, Sarato states that she knows him, but Arion pushes her inside the water to distract Sharisharu from what Sarato said. Meanwhile, the soldiers are in position, awaiting Sharisharu's signal. When Hiro regains consciousness, Sharisharu gives the signal, and the soldiers deploy a large sea monster into the hot spring. At the same time, Jiru apologizes to Hirp for what he did to him. They both come to a peaceful compromise after some minutes of conversing. At some point, the large monster comes out of the hot spring and attacks everyone present. The soldiers have difficulties controlling the monster, 
and as such it goes out of control. Eren then flees the scene, while Jiru seizes an opportunity to go after the monster, because Sarato's life is at risk. After Jiru slays the monster, Hiro meets Sarato, who lies almost unconscious on the water. After he carries her up, she opens her eyes and smiles at Hiro. This makes Tomita tease Hiro again, because of the posture he takes with Sarato. At sunset, Hiro and the others do not get any money after they manage to eliminate the beast, as directed by the poster. They realize that it was a fake, but they still sell the beast's parts for money. Minutes later, Tomita sits sad at his lair, worried about the fact that Hiro and his team are leaving the town. The following morning, Hiro and the others are all set to leave. Tomita and his crew see Hiro and the others off to say their goodbyes. Surprisingly, Tomita wishes to leave with Hiro, and his team does not feel happy about it, because they will miss him. Tomita then promises them that he will be back after he is done with his journey with Hiro. He wishes to obtain the Grand Trawa, and change the world. Minutes later the group encounters Eren on their way to find Nambuko. Eren reveals that it was Shari Sharu who sent the monster from earlier, after Hiro. She wishes to join Hiro's group, and because of that, she displays a map that will lead to Nambuko's location to buy her way in. Her plan works, and after she gets into the group, she shows the shortest route to Nambuko's location on the map. However, Halupa gets curious, and wonders why Eren joined their group. His curiosity causes him to question Eren, but he does not get any reasonable answer from her. Meanwhile, one of Nambuko's servants uses a scout bird to keep an eye on Hiro and the others. He then reports what he sees to Nambuko, and gives a status report to him. After Nambuo confirms Hiro's location, he demands Sharisharu, and then proceeds to check the market chart of magic stones. From the looks of things, the prices are going up, and he smiles because the price hike favors him. Moving on, Hiro and the others proceed on their journey, until they get to a different location. This place features a waterfall and rainbow that runs across two cliffs. Also, a beautiful garden lies ahead that piques Giru's interest. Minutes later, Eren notices something off about the place, and then turns her back to see the scout bird aiming for their position. Hiro sees this too, and proceeds to attack but fails as he gets knocked to the ground. While Hiro falls to the ground, Giru strikes the bird in such a way that sets it flying away. He then checks on Hiro, who has got his ego bruised at this point. He is pissed about the fact that the bird had the best of him, in as much as he believed he could defeat the bird. Hiru then suggests camping in the woods, because the scout bird will have difficulties reaching them there. Later that evening, Guru roasts meat using a campfire, and while at it, he notices that Sarato is late. It appears that he sent her to get water, and she is not back yet. Hiro volunteers to go find her, and Tomita teases him again. While Hiro searches for Sarato in the woods, he gets drawn to music from a musical instrument. When he gets closer to the source, he finds out that Eren is the one behind the music. He then questions her about why she joined him on his journey, and Eren replies by saying that she is helping to get the Grand Trawa. Hiro does not trust her, and because of that, he believes that she is lying. When he questions Eren about what she wants to do with the Grand Trawa, she jokes about creating a hot buy like Hiro. This level of sarcasm from Eren chases Hiro away to resume his search for Saraato. In a short time, Hiro finds Saraato sitting by herself close to a body of water. The following day, Nambuko shows off his newly made weapons to some of his clients. The upgraded weapons excite his clients, and as a result, they pay good money for them. That same day, he negotiates with the enemies of his clients and convinces them to buy the weapon he has in stock. Seconds later, he receives info that Sharisharu has arrived, and he turns to see her. When he sees her, he insults her because she failed in her previous attempt to capture Hiro, but after some time, he gives her a means to monitor Hiro and his team. He threatens to prevent Sharisharu from seeing him again if she fails this time. Later that afternoon, Sharisharu uses an enchanted mirror to watch Hiro via the scout bird. When she pinpoints Hiro's location, she uses magic to transport herself and some soldiers there. Upon getting there, Hiro looks shocked because he was not expecting her to find him. Meanwhile, Sharisaharu opens a portal, and three stone monsters proceed from it to attack Hiro and his team. After the monsters reveal themselves, Sharisharu gives an order for them to attack, including the soldier she came with. Initially, Jiru assumes a defensive position and tells the others to stay close to him. Hiro disobeys his instruction and then charges after Sharisharu because he thinks he can defeat her easily. On his way, he gets electrocuted with magic and he falls weak to the ground. Yiru tries his beast against the soldiers and manages to defeat a few of them. However, Hiro's weapon gets destroyed while blocking an icy attack from Sharisharu. Because Hiro's life is at risk, Guru goes berserk on one of the stone monsters and defeats it in a single strike. At the same time, Palupa summons a businesswoman named Mumu to help him move Sarato, Tomite, and himself to a secure location. When Mumu reveals herself, she thinks that Palupa wants to buy weapons, but then finds out that they want to run. Soon, Palupa and the others get teleported to a different location, 
leaving Giru and Hiro to handle things with the enemy. Minutes later, Sharisaru tries to inflict pain upon Hiro, but Giru arrives to prevent this. In the process, he gets restrained in a force field that weakens him. Because Hiro is outnumbered, Sharisharu mocks him and threatens to kill Gairu. She inflicts pain upon Hiro, to the point where he snaps and assumes a form that resembles a dragon. This sends chills down Sharisharu's spine, and as such, she sends the soldiers after Hiro, but Hiro eliminates them one by one. Before Hiro can get to Sharisharu, she activates a portal to flee for her life. After that, Hiro faints after expending too much energy, and while in his subconscious, he thinks about what he did. Later that day, he regains consciousness and sees a traveling group heading his way. After Hiro takes a closer look at the traveling group, he finds out that Nambuko is the one passing through the desert. Because of that, he manages to hide behind a rock to prevent Nambuko from seeing him. After Nambuko passes his position, he raises his head, wondering where he is and what happened earlier. Meanwhile, Mumu opens a portal and releases Palupa, Saraato, and Tomite. The way Mumu asks for payment pisses Palupa off, because business people are always nice to their customers. Moving on, Serato and the others see Jiru lying unconscious at the edge of a cliff. Serato uses her magic to receive him momentarily. When he wakes up, they all see that he is in pain, but even at that, Jiru gets up to find Hiro. When he peeps the bottom of the cliff, he sees a bunch of dead soldiers, and the entire group wonders what happened. Elsewhere, Nambuko meets up with one of his clients to display the might of his new weapon. At the base of a cliff, an orc stands restrained in chains, while Dr. Bafalopa stands at the top of the cliff, performing the finishing touches on the machine. Seconds later, he receives an order from Nambuko, and he activates the machine. After the machine goes live, it merges the bodies of the orc, and some humans present into a single being. At first, the result of the experiment scares Nambuko's client, but she compliments Nambuko's work after the test subject is killed. Meanwhile, Hiro watches all that goes down and gets pissed. As a result, he reveals himself and goes after Nambuko, hoping to fight and defeat him. His annoyance stems from the fact that Nambuko has no regard for human life, and also because he does as he pleases. Although he has no weapon, he still proceeds to attack Nambuko, but fails to land a single attack on him. Finally, Nambuko holds a sword to Hiro's neck and spares his life for some reason. He then orders the guards to restrain him because he still has business with him in the future. Moving on, Hiro and the others access the site where Hiro fought before passing out. The dead bodies make Hiro wonder how Hiro defeated them without a weapon. Little did he know that Hiro assumed a dragon form and eliminated the soldiers. Also, Eren's sudden appearance makes Palupa question where she was when the battle went down. Her excuse is figuring out the right time to evade a situation. Later at sunset, Nambuko summons some young pretty guys to entertain his female client at her chambers. He does this because he wants to seduce his client into sponsoring his evil project. Conversely, Sharisaru meets up with Nambuko and tries to explain what happened with Hiro. For some reason, Nambuko does nothing to her because she failed, rather he gives her some coins as a reward. This alone makes Sharisaru happy because she thinks Nambuko is pleased with her. When she leaves, Nambuko whispers that her life is his. Elsewhere, Giru and the others arrive at the site where the hybrid monster was killed. He wonders what happened to the monster, but then finds out that Nambuko had a hand in killing the monster. Concurrently, Hiro sits restrained in a chair, and he struggles to get out. While at it, Nambuko enters the room and reveals some tools he intends to use and torture Hiro. Seconds later, Nambuko takes up a short blade and holds it close to Hiro's skin. Here, he questions Hiro about his relationship with Dagon Zot, but Hiro replies with another question. He questions Nambuko about why he cares about Dagon Zot's revival, and Nambuko replies by saying that he needs the chaos that comes with the dragon. According to him, chaos means weapons, and weapons mean money. After his little chat session, he holds the blade close to Hiro's skin, causing him to scream. Coincidentally, Nambuko's client complains that the boys did not treat her well. This causes Nambuko to leave Hiro and attend to her. After Nambuko leaves the room, Hiro finds a way to free his leg from the ropes. He then uses the dragon crest he gets from his shoe to tear the ropes and restrain his arms. Meanwhile, the doctor senses Serato's presence and uses a device to find her. While following the direction of Serato's essence, he meets Hiro in a room and wonders why he gives off the same scent as Serato. He then questions Hiro about Serato's safety because he wants to be sure she is well. On the other hand, Hiro confirms that Sarato is safe, but reveals that he got separated from her. Later that evening, Sharisaru eats and drinks with her soldiers because Nambuko is happy with her. Although she looks young and pretty, she is 362 years old. In the meantime, Hiro explains to the doctor about how he met Sarato. Along the line, 
He states that Serato liked his heartbeat. As a result, the doctor takes out a device to observe Hero's heart. After he is done observing Hero's heartbeat, he freaks out that Hero's heart does not belong to him. This alone shocks Hero because he was not expecting to hear such. Even at that, the doctor tells Hero to protect Serato because she is his fate. He then provides Hero with a means to leave the camp back to Serato's position. In seconds, he appears there, leaving Jiru and the others shocked. The fact that Hiro falls from the sky grows curiosity in the minds of Jiru and the others, but he states that he will explain everything to them later. Hours later, Nambuko enters the room, he left Hiro only to see that Hiro is gone. Instead, he sees the doctor restrained to the chair that Hiro sat on. Dr. Bafalopa wrapped and restrained himself because he freed Hiro against Nambuko's wishes. Although Nambuko is mad at the doctor, he refuses to kill him because he still has lots of work for him. Before he leaves, he tells the doctor that he has not forgiven him, adding that he will pay the price in the future. The following day, Hiro and the others arrive at an abandoned magic stone quarry. According to Aaron, the site is empty because the people working there tried to increase their output too quickly and ran out of stone. Meanwhile, Jiru seems more interested in what Hiro is saying about his experience with Dr. Bafalopa. The fact that Dr. Bafalopa said Hiro's heart is not his makes Jiru stipulate a hypothesis he does not like. According to him, Daganzot's reason for protecting Hiro in the past was because Hiro possessed the dragon's heart. This statement shocks everyone, but Jiru goes on to state the possibility of Hiro's heart being switched in the past. This explains Danganzot's reason for protecting Hiro against Sharisharu some days ago. Furthermore, Giru verifies his hypothesis when he refers to what happened to Hiro in the past when he was a kid. He stipulates that Lord Byro switched Hiro's heart with Daganzots out of desperation to save his son's life. This also explains why Hir was able to manifest some of Zot's powers when he was threatened by Sharisharu the previous day. In the present, Hiro looks pissed because he carries the heart of the person he hates the most. Later that day, Sharisharu tames a pet she got from Nambuko and after some time, the pet deploys scout beings to find Hiro and his team. Meanwhile, Hiro sits by himself and ignores Palupa when he tries to speak to him. He assumes this Modi because the info he got from Giru is tooth to process. Even at that, Palupa looks at him and begins to speak about the time when Hiro was a child. At that time, Hiro was vibrant and loved to play. In the present, Hiro emphasizes that he does not remember his early childhood days, but Palupa ignores him and continues speaking. This time, he speaks about the time when Hiro lost his parents. At that time, Hiro cried while training with Giru because he missed his parents. In the present, Palupa reveals that Jiru was researching magic right from the time he used to train Hiro. At that time, he would train Hiro during the day and study magic at night. Palupa then reveals that Jiru was studying magic for Hiro's sake, and this leaves Hiro shocked because Jiru has nothing to do with Magiok as a swordsman. From the looks of things, Jiru studied magic because he wanted to find out the truth for Hiro's sake. Moving on, Hiro gets cheered up after Palupa says things that awaken Hiro's zeal, but he looks shocked because Hiro prioritizes switching hearts with Dagon Zot to make things go back to normal. Later on, they all proceed on their journey, only to find out that Eren is missing again. While on the way, Sarato speaks to Hiro, and she smiles as she sees that Hiro is no more depressed. On the other hand, Tomita thinks about Hiro's dragon form and questions Hiro if he can use it any time. Hiro then replies by stating that he does not know, adding that his dragon form is not for show. Meanwhile, Sharisharu watches Hiro and the others through an enchanted mirror. After she pinpoints Hiro's location, she prepares to teleport to his location. Minutes after sunset, Hiro and the others arrive at an abandoned settlement. There, Tomita notices something off about the place, Baker Sway, a well still, with water lies destroyed in front of a house. He then proceeds inside one of the buildings to check out what lies within, while Giru takes note of the claw marks on the walls of the buildings. At some point, he sees something that triggers a memory of when he was a kid. Years in the past, Giru's parents were captured and restrained in a village. At that time, his father begged the orcs that they should not kill his wife, rather they should kill him instead. However, the orcs were pissed at Jiru's mother, because they think she is the reason humans attack them. At the execution site, Jiru weeps, as his parents are set to be executed by hanging. His father's words to him were, a hero never leaves a good deed undone. Days after his parents died, Lord Bero arrived at the execution site and took him in. When he got to the palace, he smiled at Hiro, because he was still a baby. In the present, Hiro notices that Giru is absent-minded, and as such, he tries to get his attention. When he succeeds, Giru states that there is nothing wrong. Along the line, Tomita heads out of a building screaming for her life. 
She is chased by a monster that resembles the hybrid monster Nambuko, created by merging humans with orcs. At first, Giru attacks the monster, but fails, since he has not recovered fully. Hiro takes after him, but fails because he cannot access his dragon form. Just before the monster could have the best of him, Giru moves quickly and prevents the monster from hurting Hiro. Hours later, Eren arrives at Nambuko's domain to see Nambuko. After she meets him, she reveals that Hiro possesses Daganzot's heart. Nambuko upon hearing this wonders why Eren is giving him such important information, but she replies by saying that selling information is her job. In the end, she gets rewarded with an artifact and then leaves Nambuko's presence. After she leaves, Sharisharu meets up with Nambuko. Here, Nambuko tells her to kill Hiro, and she agrees to the assigned task. Moments later, Eren arrives at a different location, aided by Mumu. Before she left Nambuko's domain, she used the artifact she got to listen to Nambuko's order to Sharisharu. Now, she is aware that Hiro has a target at his back, and she wonders what she will do about it. Conversely, Hiro and the others arrive at a town called Rukaunao. Rukaunao is a point where many roads intersect, and a lot of supplies come through there. Because Hiro's sword got destroyed some days ago, Hiro wishes to get a new one before he leaves the town, but Jiru suggests they sell off a beast first. Moments later, Palupa makes reservations for a place where Hiro and the others will lie to rest. While at it, Hiro heads off to a store with Guru and Sarato to get a new sword. Jiru disagrees with the first one Hiro picks, and even the seconds and third. This is because he sees that they are not compatible with Hiro due to their size and weight. At some point, Hiro picks up a sword, and he approves of it. The sword almost resembles the previous one that Hiro used in the past, but with slight modifications. Meanwhile, Tamita and Palupa check out the beds in an inn. After Tamita feels the bed, he smiles because he will sleep well at night. Elsewhere, Hiro and Sarato walk along the streets of the town. On the way, they encounter a salesman who trades pieces of jewelry. One of the jewelry he sells attracts Sarato, and as such, Hiro tries to buy it. To his surprise, the jewelry Sarato wants to pricey, and as a result, he declines to buy it. At this point, Giru arrives with supplies he bought after selling off the beast he killed in the past. At the same time, Eren visits an arsenal store to buy weapons. The weapon she gets is an arrow, whose tail is enchanted with strong magic. She agrees to buy five of the arrows, even after the dealer offers no discount for them. This is because the arrows can kill a monster in an instant. Later that evening, Hiro, Giru, Palupa, and Sarato sit around a table to eat dinner. While at it, Giru brings up the name Master Theo, a person that the doctor spoke of. Out of curiosity, Hiro questions Giru about who Master Thee, and he replies by saying that he is Lord Byro's doctor. This leaves Hiro shocked, but what is more shocking is that Saraato states that Mater Theo is her friend. Tomita proposes that they should all arrange to meet Master Theo, so they can figure things out quickly, and they all agree. After dinner, Saraato heads to her room to get some sleep, and she greets Hiro goodnight before getting in. At night Saraato does not sleep for some reason. Rather, she sits on a chair smiling at the coin Hiro gave her in the past. On the other hand, Hiro and Jiru experience difficulties sleeping. But Hiro's reason is that a dragon's heart is in him. Meanwhile, a shadow that resembles the Ganzot devours a dog who sleeps beside a building. After that, the shadow attacks some buildings in the town, causing some explosions. The sound of the explosion catches Giru's attention, as well as Hiro's. As a result, Hiro charges in the direction of the explosion to find its source. At some point, Giru and Hiro see the shadow responsible for the explosions, and they both assume that it is Dagan Zot. The monster then uses its powers to capture a bunch of humans, trying to run for their lives. The humans who are unlucky enough to be caught within the shadow, get sucked in and devoured. This does not sit right with Hiro, and as such he moves to do something about it. Unfortunately, Sarato has reason to believe that the shadow is not Daganzot. She leaves Tomite to warn Hiro, because he has no idea. Meanwhile, Guru is partially caught within the shadow's reach. His leg sinks into the ground gradually, and after some time, Shari Sharu reveals herself, and points a weapon at Hiro's face. It appears that she is responsible for the shadow because she got it from Nambuko, who in turn got it from Dr. Bafalopa. Dr. Bafalopa watches all that goes down in the town from a mirror, and he looks pleased when he sees that Serato is alive. Nambuko stands behind him and warns him to go back to work. Moving on, Sharisharu tries to stab Hiro since she is under orders to kill him. Hiro tries his best to prevent the weapon from piercing his skin, but he gives up with he runs out of energy. After he gets stabbed, his dragon side gets triggered, and as a result, he assumes his dragon form. Guru and the others freak out when they see Hiro, because it is their first time seeing him take such form. Unfortunately, the hero loses control of the power within him, and as a result, he yells. Just before Giru gets sucked into the ground, Eren arrives and uses one of the arrows she bought earlier to save him. After that, Giru runs swiftly to meet Hiro, 
But when he meets him, Hiro takes up his weapon and gets a clean slice of his chest. Meanwhile, the Gunzot descends into the ground after being accidentally summoned by Hiro. In seconds, Hiro reverts to normal, only to find out that Giru is in critical condition because of him. The following morning, Giru lies unconscious on a bed as a result of an injury he sustained from Hiro the previous day. Seeing Giru in his condition makes Hiro feel bad about himself because he lost control of his dragon form. At some point, Giru wakes up and perceives the scent of Palupa's cooking. Because Palupa is not much of a cook, he feels insecure because he feels he is not as good as Giru. Also, Hiro apologizes to Giru for attacking him the previous night. He then asks Sarato if she can heal Giru the way she healed him in the past, but she replies saying that she can't. Tai leaves Hiro worried as he wonders how Giru will be healed. Along the line Giru speaks about Hiro's dragon form, where he states that Hiro might become a dragon if he continues using the dragon form. Hiro upon hearing this looks terrified because he does not intend to become a dragon. After Giru is done talking, he leans back on the bed wishing that Master Theo knows something about Hiro's Kondithian. Seconds after Giru rests his heat on the bed, he falls unconscious and does not wake up when Palupa calls him. As a result, Palupa summons Mumu to buy a medicine atat will heal Giru. While Palupa bargains with Mumu, he terminates the Nigojichun because the medicine's price is high. After Mumu leaves, Eren appears out of nowhere and states where they can get the active ingredient for Giru's medicine. According to her, the plant can be found in Kureru Arua Canyon, a place that is located 12 hours from Hiro's current location. After Hiro receives this information from Arin, he heads off with Sarat to obtain the plant. Elsewhere, Nambuko sits in his domain, taking notes of new orders from different countries. Because some countries do not order a lot of weapons, he tells his servant to spread a fake rumor about the dragon that will plunge the country is into fear. Meanwhile, Sherisharu sits in her room frustrated by the fact that Namuko does not want to see her again. This is because she failed her previous mission. Later that afternoon, Eren helps to change the towels on Giru's head. One time when she heads down the stairs, she tells Palupa and Tomite that Jiru is in bad shape. Even though she has been changing Jiru's towels, Jiru's keeps getting worse, but Palupa states that they all have to wait for Hiro to get back. After that, a conversation starts amongst them where Tomita reveals that he has never seen Serato having a meal before. While she states this fact, Palupa gets pissed because he is trying to balance their finances. Yet for some reason, Aaron takes note of what Tomita is saying. Also, Tomita states that he has never seen Saraato laugh before, and Aaron looks shunned when she hears this. Later that afternoon, Saraato and Hiro proceed on their journey to find the active ingredient for Giru's medicine. After they get to their destination, they begin to search for the drug. While at it, a giant frog comes out of nowhere to attack Hiro and Saraato. Because Saraato's life is at risk, Hiro assumes an attacking position to protect Sarato from harm. Along the line, they both run away to a different point within their location. There, Sarato sees the plant and shows it to Hiro. After Hiro sees the plant, he reaches it and tries to pull it from a large rock. Back at the inn, Arian reveals information about Nambuko, which includes the part where he gave the order for Hiro's assassination. Palupa and Tomita wonder where she got the information, and Aaron displays the artifact she got from Nambuko days ago. The enchanted device allows for long-distance conversation as well as spying on other people's conversations. In the end, Aaron states that Nambuko ordered Hiro's death because he wanted to know the relationship between Hiro and Daganzot. Back at Sarato's location, Hiro encounters difficulties in pulling the plant from the rock. Along the line, the ground shakes, and it turns out that the rock is a large glow tortoise. Things get tougher for Hiro while trying to get the plant, because now, the tortoise is moving. At some point, he slides off the top of the tortoise, but then climbs back up because Giru's life is at stake. This time, he tries to pull out the plant and succeeds. Because Hiro succeeds in pulling out the plant, he becomes excited, but his happiness is short-lived as he falls off the tortoise. Luckily for Hiro, Saraato was there to catch him before reaching the ground. Amid Saraato's arms, Hiro smiles but then frowns momentarily because he was caught by a girl. This makes Saraato laugh, and Hiro looks surprised because Serato is not the type to laugh often. Later that evening, Jiru regains consciousness immediately after medicine is administered to him. Meanwhile, Tomita uses Eren's device to speak to Peshat and the rest of his crew. From the looks of things, things are not going well in Linsekisi, and Tomita looks pissed. Minutes after Jiru recovers, he appreciates Hiro and Sarato for their combined efforts in saving his life. Tomita enters the house after he is done speaking to Peshat, with a sad look on his face. Aaron questions him about things in Linsikisa, and he replies saying that things are not going well. According to him, kids in Linsikisa are being sent out of their homes to mine magic stones. His crew are safe, but he is pissed about the fact that the poor are treated badly. This alone intensifies his wish to get the Grand Troa to save everyone. The way Tomite expresses his emotions drives Sara Ato 
to tears, leaving Tomiti shocked. The following day, they all resume their journey to find Master Theo. They arrive at Garuko, a mountain where Master Theo dwells. Seconds after arriving on the mountain, Master Theo arrives at their position leaving Hiro and the others stunned. Master Theo's presence triggers Giru and Palupa to go on their knees to pay their respects. Even at that, Master Theo is more concerned with the fact that Giru and the others came to him without gifts. When he sees Serato, he smiles and hugs her, in a way that infuriates Hiro. However, Palupa gets curious and questions Master Theo on how he became friends with Saraato, but he does not give a reasonable answer. Rather, he replies by saying that Saraato is his friend. Moments later, Giru tells Master Theo about what is going on with Hiro, including Hiro's dragon form. He seeks advice from Master Theo, so he will know the best option for Hiro, given the situation at hand. Because of the power Master Theo displays, Hiro states that he would have done something against Daganzot the time his parents fought the dragon. In Theo's defense, he states that Daganzot cannot be stopped by a single mage. He also adds that the dragon is too much for humans to handle. After he is done talking, he suggests that Hiro join him in magic training. The idea of training shocks Hiro because he claims he is a swordsman, not a mage. On the other hand, Giru whispers to Hiro, saying that Theo might want to teach him about the dragon form. This makes Hiro agree to join Theo in training. Minutes later, Hiro stands some meters away from Theo, holding a sword. Suited around them are Giru, Palupa, Sarato, and Eren, ready to watch Hiro's performance against Theo. During the training session, Theo makes Hiro do many weird things like walking in a straight line and folding papers. The training exercise makes no sense to Hiro, and as such, he looks uninterested in it. Meanwhile, Eren uses her enchanted device to listen to war updates from different countries. Some of the countries on the continent are in preparations for war due to the false information that Nambuko spread across to them. The info Eren gets from the device makes her realize that war is imminent. Elsewhere, Giru wanders alone in the woods close to Hirp's location. While at it, a beast attacks him, but he kills it easily and intends to use it for dinner. Moving on, Master Theo notices something about Hiro when he tells him to throw a stone during their training session. Hiro does not see what Theo sees, and as a result, he does not understand the reason behind the ridiculous training. He gets upset and points his weapon towards Theo, but Palupa tells him not to behave rudely. At this point, Master Theo is aware that Hiro is frustrated, and because of that, he suggests sword training. In the next phase of their training, Hiro stands in front of Master Theo, armed with his sword. Master Theo on the other hand, holds an invisible blade called the Koku Blade. He uses the blade to hit an object stuck to the ground in mid-air, in such a way that it returns to its original position after falling. The way Master Tho executes this technique leaves Plaupa and Hiro stunned. Master Theo then tells Hiro to use the blade, but Hiro has little faith that he can wield such a weapon. He still tries to perform the implement technique as Master Theo, but fails to move the object. However, he did not fail completely because Master Theo noticed a minute effect on the object and rock in Hiro's attack path. The fact that Hiro can cause some movement on the rock leaves Master Theo and Saraito shocked, but Hiro thinks the training is pointless. Even at that, Master Theo compliments him, and they proceed with their training till sunset. After training, Hiro joins the others inside for dinner. Moments after dinner, they all go to bed, except Hiro, who is outside the cave training with Master Theo. Elsewhere, one of Sharisharu receives info that Nambuko wants to see her. The fact that Nambuko demands her presence brightens her mood, leaving her excited. Meanwhile, Giru converses with Master Theo about Hiro. During their conversation, Master Theo states that Hiro is similar to his dad. He has expectations that Hiro will become a mage like Lord Byro, his father. On the other hand, Giru confirms that Hiro has no future as a swordsman. He realized this when he pushed Hiro to his limits some days ago. The same incident that made him take Hiro to the Healing Springs. In the present, Giru also confirms that he is studying magic to get info about Hiro's dragon form. Surprisingly, Master Theo states taught Hiro's magical power is strong. He says this because, during the training session with Hiro, he came close to using defensive magic against the invisible attacks Hiro launched at him. Before the conversation with Hiro ends, Master Theo states that Hiro is dangerous, and he must not be separated from Serato, because they are two of a pair. Later that night, Sharisharu dashes and meets up with Nambuko. When he meets him, she smiles but Nambuko is more fixated on the task she wants her to do. Even as Sharisaru is unaware of what Nambuko wants her to do, she follows him willingly to receive the details. The following morning, Hiro Rizumi's training with Master Theo, but quits after Master Theo makes him perform some weird exercises. To conclude their training, Master Theo tells him to attack him without moving, as that will be the only way to end their training. Hiro attempts the attack but fails to deal any damage to Master Theo. 
On the other hand, Master Theo pretends to be hit to give Hiro some credit since Sarato and the others are watching. Their training ends, and Hiro says his final goodbye to Master Theo, alongside Giru and the others. Minutes after they leave, Master Theo reminisces on Hiro's last attack against him. It appears that Hiro was successful in attacking Master Theo, but it was not visible because Master Theo put up a strong defensive field around him. In the present, he fears that it is only a fraction of Hiro's power. Later that morning, Hiro and the others arrive at a point in the desert. There, they all wonder if it is safe to cross the desert. The alternative route will make them take longer to arrive at Nambuko's location. Meanwhile, Hiro proceeds, and a bird attacks him, but Jiru moves swiftly to protect Hiro. At this point, Tomita gets pissed, because the enemy always knows where they are. While complaining, she overhears Nambuko speaking through Eren's device, which is on the ground. This alone validates Palupa's suspicion of Eren, and the group finds out that she is a traitor. Seconds later, Eren picks up her device, and Palupa pressures her to speak. She then states that she is an information broker, but the said term makes no meaning to Palupa. All Giru wants to know at this point, is if Eren sold them out. When he questions Eren, Giri reveals that she made money from selling them out. This alone makes Giru upset, but he controls his anger enough to spare Eren's life. Because Eren's deeds are now exposed, Hiro and the rest of the team abandon her in the desert, even though she knows the shortest route to Nambuko's location. Back at Nambuko's domain, Sheri Shiryu prepares to become one with her pet, just like humans did with the orcs some days ago. Before she begins the procedure, a guard present at the scene begs her not to, but she declines. Finally, she tells the doctor to begin the procedure, leaving the guard shocked. Moving on, Hiro and his team walk through the hot fields of the desert. Hiro does not look pleased with the weather condition, but he still proceeds on the journey. Elsewhere, one of the countries on the continent prepares for war, because they believe that the other two countries have formed a union to use Daganzot to eliminate them. Later that evening, Hiro, Palupa, and the others sit around a campfire to stay warm since the weather is cold. This alone leaves Tomita wondering how the desert gets so hot in the day, but cold at night. The following day, another country on the continent prepares for war, because they believe that the other two contours have formed a union to use Daganzot to eliminate them. Later that morning, Hiro craves water because he is thirsty. Palupa on the other hand tries to get to his position, but falls into a sand pit. At the end of the pit, is a monster that resembles a crab. Hiro and the others try their best to get Palupa out of the pit, but their methods do not work. At the nick of time, Eren arrives and provides support to Palupa, saving his life in the process. After saving Palupa's life, she emphasizes that they will all end up dead if they keep going in their current direction. Elsewhere, the third country prepares for war after receiving confirmation from their king because their enemies have allied together. Back in the desert, a sandstorm separates the team leaving each of them scattered at different points on the desert. After Palupa gets up, he finds out that Arion is with him. This makes him get pissed because he does not like Eren, especially after what he did. On the other hand, Hiru finds Tomite lying unconscious on the ground but wonders where Hiro might be. Meanwhile, Hiro is with Sarato, and they both look for the oasis to get water. At sunset, Palupa walks with Ayn to a certain point and faints due to intense dehydration. The following morning, Palupa wakes up from sleep and continues his journey with Eren. Meanwhile, Hiro does not get up because he needs water. Because of that, Serato heads out to find water to prevent Hiro from dying. Moments later, Hiro meets up with Palupa and Eren. He holds Tomiti on his back and joins them to look for water. Sarato on the other hand, finds water and delivers it to Hiro. Immediately he wakes up after water gets into his mouth. The same thing goes for Palupa when Jiru gives him water from the oasis. At midday, Hiro and Sarato proceed on their journey to join his team. On the way, Sharia Sharu attacks them and uses her new mutated body to her advantage. She easily kicks Sarato to the ground and then teleports with Hiro to Nambuko's lair. Hours later, soldiers from the three countries assemble at key points in preparation for war. At this point, it appears that Nambuko's plan is working because all countries are ready for a continent-wide war. Hiro sits weak on a chair and Nambuko walks into the room to speak to him. Nambuko is aware that Hiro possesses Daganzot's heart, which makes him a valuable asset. He wishes to rain disaster on the continent to fulfill his objectives. Hiro does not like the idea of Nambuko's plans, and because of that, he takes up his sword to fight Nambuko. Their battle begins and ends almost immediately, because Nambuko is more skilled in the art. He holds his sword to Hiro's neck, and then speaks about the night when Lord Bairo tried to defeat Daganzot. At that time, Nambuko was the one who shot Lord Bayo in the back, preventing him from erecting the barrier around Dagazot. In the present, Hiro gets enraged 
because Nambuko is responsible for his parents' death. He wishes to kill Nambuko and avenge his parents' death. Also, Nambuko was only able to survive Daganzot's flames because he protected himself with the Grand Troa. At that time, he witnessed the flames, but admired it and craved it. In the present, Nambuko reveals that he has no intention of killing Hiro because he needs Hiro's heart to control Daganzot. Elsewhere, Giru, Palupa, and Tomite search for Hiro. At some point, Eren uses her device to find Hiro. While at it, she detects Hiro's possible direction and informs the team. After they cover some distance, they see Saraato banging a large metal. At first, Palupa thinks that Saraato has gone crazy, but Giru explains that she is summoning a dragon. The sound produced attracts a red dragon that flies to her position. When the red dragon arrives, he engulfs Sarato in his mouth, leaving Guru and the others shocked. Meanwhile, Sarato reveals herself after some time and tells the team that the dragon has agreed to give them a lift. By this time, Guru holds a weapon intending to harm the dragon, but he lowers it after Sarato speaks. Soon, they proceed on their journey, clinging to the red dragon in mid-air. Back at Nambuko's domain, Dr. Bafalopa prepares a large magical reactor for Nambuko's plans. The amount of energy Nambuko requires for his plan to work will consume the building, but he sees it as a sacrifice to obtain Daganzot. Next, the coder detects something on the radar, and it turns out that Jiru and the others have arrived at Nambuko's domain. Unfortunately, the red dragon gets shot while in mid-air, when it gets closer to the building. Even at that, Jiru and the others hide within the walls of the building, looking for a way inside. Amid the search for an entrance, the doctor appears looking for Sarato. After he gets Sarato, he initiates teleportation magic, but Jiru and the others join him before he leaves. While in the building, the doctor looks excited because he gets to see Sarato again. The way he behaves around her makes Palupa and the others realize that he is Sarato's father. But Jiru finds it hard to believe that the doctor could father someone as beautiful as Sarato. This leaves Palupa to question Sarato on what she is. She then replies by saying that she was made at Nambuko's orders. The doctor confirms this, adding that Sarato is a doll he made, and this leaves Palupa and the others shocked. Even at that, Palupa gets curious and questions why Sarato was created. The doctor then states that Nambuko was present when Lord Byro wanted to defeat Dagan Zot. After he says this, Giru opposes him, because he is the only one who survived the incident with Hiro. But the doctor interrupts him saying that Nambuko survived using a dragon blood crystal. According to him, the crystal is made from the blood that drops from Daganzot's wounds, and it protects one from the soul-destroying flames emitted by Daganzot. However, the doctor reveals that he was asked to create the ultimate soldier using the crystals. After he was done, Nambuko ordered that Sarato be destroyed because of her beauty, but Nambuko refused it and let her escape instead. At some point, Giru reveals that Hiro possesses Daganzot's heart. After the doctor hears this, he realizes we Sarato was drawn to Hiro's heart because she has none of her own. Unfortunately, wishes for Sarato to leave Hiro alone, because Nambuko is close to summoning Daganzot, he states that Nambuko will want to use her during the hour of the ultimate dragon, which is the time when Daganzot appears. Sarato declines her father's wishes, and then proceeds to find Hiro. After she leaves, the doctor begs Giru, Palupa, and the others to take care of Sarato, because she is his daughter. Minutes later, Hiro and the others wander off into the building, looking for Hiro. At some point, they see the large magical reactor, and wonder what it is. Nambuko arrives at the scene with Sharisharu, holding a blade to Hiro's neck. He intends to take Sarato, and use her alongside Hiro, to achieve his plans. Because Hiro's life is at risk, Sarato agrees to join Nambuko. After she meets him, Sharisharu teleports them to Balbagoa, the same place where Lord Bairo died. Seconds later, Sharisharu gets attacked by Giru, but she laughs because Nambuko is gone. At Balbagoa, the hour of the ultimate dragon is nay, and the sun becomes red. According to Shari Sharu, Nambuko intends to use the remaining magic from his domain to fuse all the soldiers from the different countries. Giru upon hearing this looks stunned, because a greater evil will be born into the world. In seconds the entire building begins closing itself up because of the magic it's sending to Balbagoa. After it closes, a message from Nambuko is shown in the building, telling everyone inside that their souls will be turned to magic. This message leaves everyone in the building shocked, as they were not expecting Nambuko to do such. On the other hand, Sharisharu does not process the message well, because she never thought that Nambuko would abandon her. She tries to teleport, but fails, and then yells in the process. At Balbagoa, the doctor opposes Nambuko, because Sarato's life is at risk, but Nambuko lands an attack on him, setting him near critical condition. After that, Nambuko uses compulsion magic to make Sarato do as he wishes. He stabs Sarato lightly on her chest, 
causing her to revert to battle mode. Because Serato is under Nambuko's spell, she attacks Hiro after she receives the order from Nambuko. Back at Nambuko's domain, the building collapses gradually, as absorbed from it. Hiru then comes up with an idea that makes Palupa summon Mumu for help. At first Mumu states that she cannot help, but after Palupa and the others contribute huge amounts of money to pay, Mumu agrees to help. After that, Giru tells Sharisharu that she will carry them to Balbagoa once they get out. She agrees with the offer, under the notion that Giru will leave Nambuko for her to deal with. Elsewhere, Hiro morphs into his dragon form after taking lots of damage from Saraato. As he dives to attack Saraato, Giru proceeds out of a portal with the others yelling his name. After Sharisharu arrives at Balbagoa, she attacks Giru, and it appears that she is under Nambuko's control. Meanwhile, Hiro attacks Sarato launching several attacks on her, but fails to deal damage to her. Sarato fights back following Nambuko's wishes, and then deals lots of damage to Hiro. It gets to a point where Sarato hurts Hiro, in such a way that makes Daganzot reveal himself, because his heart is at risk. His arrival excites Nambuko who heads to jumpstart a large machine. After the machine goes live, Nambuko uses the Grand Troa to make Daganzot fuse with him. This alone defies his original plan, leaving Giru and the others shocked. The fusion between Nambuko and Daganzot consumes lots of magical energy, but it comes out as a success in the end. After Nambuko becomes one with the dragon, Hiro attacks him, but fails to deal damage to him. Instead, he gets beaten mercilessly. Amid the pain, Hiro remembers what his parents said to him when he was a kid. In their words, you still have a task to do. After Hiro remembers this, he regains himself in mid-air and frees himself from Nambuko's grip. After he lands on the ground, Nambuko grabs him and beats him up. In the meantime, Tomita grabs the doctor and threatens him to do something about Nambuko. The doctor points in the direction of the Grand Troa, saying that if it is taken away, Nambuko will lose his magic supply. He then heads with Tomita to deactivate the device to prevent Nambuko from using the soul-consuming flames. They are running out of time and are at risk of death if they fail to shut down the device. Finally, Aaron and the others manage to shut down the device and take the Grand Troa, but Nambuko does not lose his powers. Instead, he threatens to annihilate Giru and the others with soul-consuming flames. Nambuko deploys the soul-consuming flames only to find out that Sarato protected Hiro and the others from death. This infuriates him, and as a result, he takes out the Dragonblood Crystal from her chest. Because the crystal powers her body, she falls unconscious to the ground after Nambuko takes it away from her. Sarato's unresponsive condition drives Hiro to rage, and as a result, he slices off Nambuko's arm with it. After that, he uses all his strength to land an attack on Nambuko, stabbing him in the process. As Nambuko falls to the ground, he loses his form, and Daganzot reappears from the ground. Hiro sees this, and then considers killing himself to kill Daganzot, since he possesses the dragon's heart. Just before he stabs himself, he reconsiders his intentions, and then requests for the Grand Troa. After he gets the treasure, he summons a glowing blade from it, and lands a nasty attack on Daganzot's chest that rips open a part of his heart. Hiro then uses the opportunity to take his heart from Daganzot, and then he inserts it inside Sarato to bring her back to life. After Sarato regains consciousness, Hiro smiles, while Daganzot fades away. His passing causes the atmosphere to go back to the way it was. Meanwhile, Palupa and the others struggle with who will gain the Grand Troa, but the device falls and shatters on the ground. After it shatters, Jiru states that he knew the device was not the Grand Troa, but rather it was Lord Byro's sealing device. Meanwhile, Hiro weeps after he confirms that Sarato is alive. Dagon Zot's death makes the soldiers from the three different countries turn their backs and head to their origins. They do not intend to fight anymore because it is pointless. Soon, Mamu appears excited that Palupa and the others are alive, but she demands the rest of her money. Meanwhile, some soldiers meet Sharisharu, and one of them looks happy that she is safe. The soldier then commends Sharisharu's looks making her stop crying. The following day, Hiro gives Tomita his dragon crest as a gift. When Tomita speaks of going back to Linsakise, Palupa interrupts him saying that they don't have any money to fund the trip. Meanwhile, Hiro is really hyped to train with his sword alongside Giru. The End